I was gonna go shoot a film today, but it got rained out, so instead we're gonna do a tutorial on how you can do motion graphics titles like this. So motion graphics and titling is a pretty big thing these days, and how you do titles can have a big difference on how people perceive your videos, how they see the quality, how they see the theme of your videos. So it's really important to have really good titles, and not only titles that look interesting, but that fit the mood and the theme of your videos. So I created the title that I showed you before the intro as an uh, intro to use in several videos for the outdoors that I'm going to be doing. So if we look at the text right here, and I can just, I have my After Effects composition right here, I can just play it back and show it to you. There's really three things that I wanted to get across. First, I want to have a place where I can put the title of whatever it is I'm looking at. In this case, I did it with a box to kind of highlight it, and um, I didn't do anything solid behind it because I wanted you to be able to see what was behind the title. That way it wasn't covering up anything. And then I added the, uh, the latitude and longitude coordinates and then the altitude because it's a video about the outdoors. In specific, it'll be used for several uh, mountains that I'm going to be doing videos on climbing. So uh, having that type of information kind of adds to the outdoors feel and uh, the altitude, having that is a nice reference uh, since altitude is the pretty common way to gauge mountains. So anyway, I have the entire composition right here, and I'll go over and show you uh, my layers right here. It's pretty easy. It's only four layers. Um, it's mostly just figuring out how uh, to animate it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new composition. I just did this in 1080p. It's text, um, so if you use uh, the Essential Graphics Panel, which I'll show you how to use at the end of this video, even if you scale it up to something ridiculous like 8K, it'll still look just as good because it's vectors, not uh, actual image. So anyway, I'll just create a new 1080p timeline since that's easy to work with. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my text. So I can do that by selecting my text tool and I'll go over here and we'll just make this say uh, default name and that's just going to be my text. Now in my paragraph panel over here I'm just going to center that and then I'm going to have to scale this up. Now the font I'm using which I can select in character is Lado and I'm using the medium. I really like the Lado font. It's very similar to Helvetica in that it's a very clean modern font but it has a little bit more curve and a little bit more character to it, you might say. So I kind of like it. It's a pretty unique font, and I think it works really well for motion graphics. So I like to use it a lot. Now for size, I'm going to put in 125. Uh, that's a nice, decent size. And then if I go into a line right here, I can just hit this, and that will center it perfectly for me. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to create that box. So to do that, I'm just going to grab this tool right here, which is my shape tool. If I just deselect that and then just drag over, it will create a shape layer. Now, if you look at this, obviously this isn't good at all. This is just a red box, uh, but that's fairly easy to fix. So if we just go back over here into our shape controls into the rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up so you can see it a little bit easier. So our, um, our stroke we wanna leave, our fill, we're gonna change the opacity to zero that way there's not any fill. Then we can, we have our stroke now, and we can make that a little bigger. We're gonna do a stroke width of five. So now if you go back over here, I can deselect that, and you can see that looks pretty good. And we can just hit the align again to perfectly align that and perfectly center it. Once we've done that, if you want to change the size of that, uh, the easiest way is just to go into transform and then just change the scale so say maybe I want it a little shorter, I can just unlink those and go like 90% height. So now if you look, you can see it's a little bit shorter. But you can use that to tweak it or say um, whatever name we use ends up being longer. Then we can just bring up the horizontal scale and just change the width that way. It will affect the scale of these sides a little bit, but it's not enough to be noticeable 
Um, so generally the scale is just the fastest and easiest way to do that. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to right click this and we're going to pre-compose this, the shape layer. Now the reason we're pre-composing the shape layer is that we're going to use a mask to animate that kind of coming around uh, part of it and you can't mask a shape layer so we're going to have to pre-compose it so that we can mask it. And now if we go in here we can just add our mask and then we'll be able to just animate that. Actually, I want to have an extra point. I'll go ahead and delete that. And then we'll have this mask that we can use to uh, animate around and to reveal that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now you can see I have this animated. So it'll just go around like that. Not too fancy, um, but it's just a linear animation there. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this name that we've got right here come up. So this is actually really easy to do. Uh, so all you have to do is just set up uh, where you want to do it. And then uh, we're going to transform right here. So all you have to do is just make a keyframe for the position and then just move this down to say right here. And then where we want it to stop, say we'll have it come in right here. Uh, we can just recenter it. So that way you can see it will move up. And uh, you can change that. Maybe you decide that should be a little faster. Change it like that. I might still have that quite a bit faster. All right, and then uh, we also want to make the uh, motion a little bit more smooth. So it's a linear motion right now. So if we go into our graph editor, we can actually add, slow out. So if we select this and then add that button right there, um, then if we look at the motion, you'll see it kind of slows down and we can adjust um, how much we want that to slow down by adjusting the, the curve. But now it just kind of slows down just a little bit before it stops. So we can close out the graph editor. And now we're going to add a transition. So if we go into our effects and presets, and I'll just bring this down so we can see it. And we got some transitions in here. Now for this one, I actually use Block Dissolve. You could easily use any uh, effect that you wanted to, any transition that you wanted to, uh, but I use the Block Dissolve. <clears throat> so what you're gonna do is just line up your keyframes right here. So we've got our transition completeness right here. So we can just put that at 100% and that will make our thing invisible. And then we just go right here, transition completion zero. Oh, and we'll have to remember to hit our keyframe button. So now if we go over here and we watch it back, we can see we've just got it come up just like that, which is perfect. And uh, we can decide maybe that we wanted it to come in a little bit earlier. So we could go in here and we can just take all of our keyframes in here and we can just drag them earlier. So that way our effect will come in a little bit earlier, you can see. Nothing too fancy. And again, you could use any transition you want right there. Now the last thing we'd have to do is just to animate the text that's going to go in right here. So I'm just going to add the uh, text tool. And um, let's just put in an altitude, let's say 1020, or we'll just say altitude feet. Um, just as a reference. Now for size, for size we're going to set this to 50 pixels high. So if we just go right here, 50 pixels, and then we can just use our little grabber here to just line it up where we want. There we go. And um, the other, uh, the latitude and longitude is exactly the same as this. Um, so we can just duplicate this layer. So we got that. So now um, our text, we can just change the x-axis to move that down a little bit. So we can say, this is our latitude slash longitude. And we actually want this to be left aligned. I should have changed that earlier. But now we can grab both of these and just uh, line them up together. There we go. Um, so perfect, just like that. So now we have to do the animation to bring them in. Now the animation to bring them in is super easy. easy. 
it's almost exactly the same. So what we do if we go back in here is to set our position and our opacity keys and then if we just move this back a little bit we can change our opacity to 0% and then we can change our position right here to move it over. And then we're going to do the same thing here where we go into the graph editor and we want this to have kind of a slow out that way it slows down as it comes in. So now if we watch that that comes in a little fast so if we go back over we can just move the keyframes apart. That looks pretty good and uh, you could tweak it a little bit more and then all we have to do is just uh, copy and paste our controls, our transform controls over here to our other one. So there, and um, so now we'll have those come in one after another. And again, if we want to adjust them so they happen a little closer together, we can just select our keyframes and just drag them over. So now if you look at that, there we go. And so now if we watch the whole thing in succession, we get that. Now this uh, version that I just showed you isn't exactly the same. If we go back over, I can show you uh, the one that I showed you at the beginning is just a little bit different, but you could easily tweak that to however you wanted or uh, whatever you were doing. You might want to have a slightly different transition or something like that you could easily just tweak some of the different properties to just fine tune it exactly how you want it. Just putting together the original part only took me about as long as this video is, but actually tweaking it and fine tuning it to get it exactly how I wanted it took several hours. So that's something you'll have to do when you actually recreate this on your own is to take the time to tweak it and really dial it in to get, you, to get it how you want it. That way it looks as good as it can. Now one more thing I want to cover is how to do the, or how to transfer this into Premiere using the Essential Graphics panel. So you can see here, if I go over to my main monitor, I have the Essential Graphics panel pulled up, and I have a template right here. So all you have to do is just select your composition. So the original composition that I used was Composition 1, so I can select that. I can name that. Now you can put controls in here which you'll be able to change in Premiere. So for example, I can make it so that the source text can be changed in Premiere. Uh, I could also add the text from the latitude, and then I can add in the altitude text. And so whatever I add in, I can edit within Premiere once I import the project. Now, unfortunately, I can't change the size of the box inside Premiere. They haven't added in that ability yet. So you would have to come back into After Effects to change the size of the box, but you can do a lot of stuff with text. So if you decide you don't want the box or something like that, you just want text, then you can easily just set it up so that you'll be able to edit that all within Premiere without going into After Effects. So now all you have to do is hit Expert Motion Graphics Panel and just save and then you can choose where to save it. So in this case, I can save it to my Essential Graphics panel, which means once I go into Premiere, if I open my Essential Graphics panel inside Premiere, I'll be able to open that up, and then again, I'll be able to edit everything that was uh, I, cho I chose to be editable inside After Effects. But anyway, that's it for this video. So if this video helped you to learn how to do motion graphics and stuff like that, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit that dislike button. If you have any questions or comments about how I did this, feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.